Hi, this is Mark from Skywagons University, as you can see from the sign, which isn't a logo, but it needs a little bit of touch up. Today we're going to finish the model year changes, because I seem to have uh, the last three of the main model year changes planes right here. So we're going to walk that way, briefly talking about them, and then come back doing all the differences. So this is an 80, so it's a Q, 182Q. This is a 69, so it's an M. And then this is a 62, which is the first year of the wide cabin electric flaps. So let's go through the differences and I'll quickly recap on the ones before it. And there are other videos that go over this. So they started in 56. 56 to 59 are the straight tails with the manual flaps. 60 and 61, there are other videos on these as well, are the three side windows, slope tail, manual flaps and the 61 is a tiny bit lower than the 60 and it's got cowl fasteners not screws so those are the those are the 180 185 airframe with nose wheels so that but they're sloped tail so that's a bit confusing 59 so 56 to 59 straight tail 60 61 slope tail but manual flaps and then 62 and 63 and beyond are all the wide cabin electric flaps fixed tail planes but the 62 and 63 are kind of unique on their own because they've got this different window configuration. So we'll have a look closely. So if you kind of shoot between these two, see this has a square window and then a, it's got a center strip down the back of the window. Whereas that plane, this is a 69. So 64 right through to present day is this window configuration which is teardrop shaped and the back window is one piece. So this is the sky lane. This is the Omnivision rear window. Same size flaps. There's a plane doing a run up over there, but you'd expect that because it's an airport. So a couple of other things. They've got mods on them. So there's a few changes that have made them non-standard. Like these two both have stole kits, but these planes would have the straight cuff wing as well. So the other thing on a 62, and 63, just always remember 62 and 63, the wraparound with the stripe and the square, that's a 62, 63, and an X N number. If it's original, it'll be an X. So the same vertical fin and rudder, but they have this triangular counterweight. So that is like on a, um, a, a straight tail or a 60, 61 or 59. They have this triangular counterweight as opposed to the square counterweight. So this is more like a 206. So it's square. So that is what, is what identifies that. Now something to remember about 182s. All of them have 470s in, except the 97 to 2022 2s, I know that. So 56 to 86. All of them have 470s. All of them are carbureted. All of them are continental. Most of them, up until 77, with some exceptions, are 1500 hour TBO engines. And all of them have useful loads of around 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. And they all do about 135 knots. And they all burn about 12 and a half gallons an hour. So all 182s do the exact same job, but different models have different features. Like, this is the first year of that rear window, like I was talking about, but that is the wide cabin. That cabin is five inches wider than the manual flapped planes, the slope tails and the straight tails. Other minor differences, this is just like plane spotter, you know, model year identification detail. These planes, 62 and 63 and earlier, they have cowlings a little bit like a 180, 185. It's just a big opening. There's no, there's no separator in here behind the spinner. So we'll walk over to this 69 and look at some of the differences. This is, that's a 62, this is a 69. It's only like seven years different. Its cowling is just on. We're doing maintenance on it, so you'll see things disconnected, but it's just so I can show you. See, this is the piece behind the spinner. So that plane does not have that. So that's an identifier. And remember, everything pre-1972, 72 and older, have landing lights in the wing. So the 62 does, the 69 does. There's a stole kit on both, so it's confusing about the cuffed edge. If it has the landing light in the wing, it's a straight cord wing. If the landing light moves into the nose, like on the 80 model we're going to look at in a minute, that's a camber cuff wing. That started in 73 with the 182P. 
So this 69 and that 62, they also have spring steel gear. So you can see this is a, it's a, quarter, it's a three quarter inch thick piece of bent steel and it's seven and a half feet wide, same as that. And if you're gonna be using them off airport or putting big tires on it or being a bit rough on the plane, you want the pre-72 spring steel gear seven and a half feet wide because it's just sturdier. It's like a 206, it's like a 185. That stopped when they went into the 182P. So let's go over now and look at the Q. Qs and Ps and Rs are the same airframe. So this is a Q. Ps are 73 to 76, inclusive. Qs are 77 to 81. That's a Q, it's an 80. And 80, uh, 81 to 86 are the R models, and R models are Q models with a larger baggage area and a slightly higher gross weight. So the difference between this and that 69, which to the average person on a ramp look almost identical, same windows, same layout, same... There's a, the little differences about it are these have what they call the Landomatic landing gear. And it isn't really Landomatic, you still have to be there, but it's a tube or a tube inside a fairing. See, that's like a fairing and there's a metal tube in there. They're nine feet wide, and that came out in 73. That's the Landomatic landing gear, no spring steel. It's still a strong gear, but it's not as strong as that spring steel gear. They also have this floating cowling. See how this looks like it doesn't fit? It's suspended. Actually, if you come up closer, I'll wiggle it around and get a good idea of... The cowling on these other planes is actually fastened straight to the firewall, and on these, it's rubber-mounted for vibration. So that's, a, that's a, uh, a PQR thing. And again, see here, it's got the gap behind the, the spinner for aerodynamics. It's got this power bulge. So this is 73 to 86. It's got this cowling on it with the power bulge above the spinner. Landing lights are in the nose. That's just got air filters in the nose. No landing light in the wing. And this is the factory camber cuff leading edge, which is a partial stole cuff. It's actually Robertson's cuff. Cessna used it in 73 on all their successive planes right up till current day, and it's the Robertson profile on the standard wing. So it's a little bit of a stall kit. And then being an 80, aficionados will remember, 79 and newer, wet wing. So slightly different cowling, power bulge, camper cuff wing, landing lights in the nose, widespread gear. Those are all Q, P, Q and R models, 76 to 86. So a little bit more detail on the engines in them. The P has a 1500 hour TBO, 2600 RPM, 230 horsepower, 0470R. It could be a KLR or S, 180, 182s. Then in 77, when the Q, when the, well, when 182 came out, 77 to 80, this is an 80, they have the 0470U in them, now U's are still 230 horse, but they're 2400 RPM, and they have higher compression, so they have lower RPM to maintain the 230 horse. The 230 horsepower is the type certificate for the 182, so rather than let the high compression engine be 260 horsepower, they governed it to 2400. So these have a, they're literally governed at 2400 for their max horsepower. So these generate 230 at 24, those generate 230 at 26, so when you wind that back to 24, it's not 230, and this is. So these generate their horsepower longer in cruise, higher. Some of these are 1,500 hour TBOs, and some are 2,000 hour TBOs. We might need a notepad here. But the 470U, if you read on the data plate, it'll say 0470U, and then there's a bracket, and it says that after it, there's a number between like three and 27. If that number is nine or less, that's a 1,500 hour TBO. And if it's 10 right up till present day, it's 2,000 hour TBO. So not all U's are 2,000 hour TBOs. Um, the R model is the same plane as a Q, except it's got slightly different door handles and it's got a larger baggage area and it carries about 100, and, correct me if I'm wrong, 180 pounds more. The gross weight's higher. There is an STC to make the P and the Q the same weight carrying abilities as the R, literally with a bit of paper, an STC. 
And that STC says, yes, you can do it. And the basis of that is Cessna certified the R at a higher gross weight. So these other planes, these 72 to 70, uh, 72 to 81s, they also could carry it physically but aren't allowed to because they're certified at a lower gross weight. But if you get that STC, it'll allow you to carry the extra weight because Cessna's engineering department said we did nothing to it other than certify it at a higher gross weight. So the R is the last years, 81 to 86, and those are Qs with bigger baggage areas. That's a lot of information, but you can play it again slowly if you're that interested. So another, just by coincidence, this is an 80, as I've said numerous times, but that's an 80 paint scheme. So that is the scheme on all 80s. Exactly that, different colors, but exactly that scheme. And then by coincidence also, since they're here, that 69 is pretty much a 69 scheme. 69s widen out over the tail like that. They always seem to be like the wheel pants widen out over the tail. And then just quickly, briefly, it's not included in the video, but that one over there, 97077, that is a 79. And that is a 79 paint scheme. So they're all these exact schemes, but they vary in color. So the little hatches, the little black hatch mark in the middle of that, that says 79. This says 80, it's straight lines with the black bit further back. Just little di differences too, but if you don't remember or care about all the little idiosyncrasies of the engine and which wing and what gear leg it was on at the time, the paint scheme gives it away, but you'll also see 60s planes with 80 schemes on because they look nice. So that also can be confusing. And then you look at the landing light position and the cowling type and the gear. So um, this is Mark from Skywagon University doing another video. Not the most interesting one, I have to say, because it's numbers and facts and plane spotter type information, but it's like background information of the different years of production. I mean, 56 to 86 were these five major changes. There was the straight tails, the slope tails, and then the wide bodies, and the wide bodies are these three. So it's a lot of information. We didn't fly anything, and if you watched it this far, thanks a lot, because it's a lot of numbers and words. And we're going to be doing some other more videos very soon. So Mark from Skywagon University signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh. Subscribe on the bell and uh, on the little notifications button if you want to get future videos.